Let's talk more. I'm joined now by the, uh, the political presentation coach, Graham Davis. Very good to have you with us. Let's continue talking about the budget, shall we? People are minutely going over the figures now, aren't they? And they're going to vary over the days to come. But, they're going um, to vary a lot, I suppose, yeah. because we've always suspected that politicians can't count. And that seems to have been confirmed by the Institute of Fiscal Studies, who have calculated that there is a £45 billion black hole in government finances, uh, according to a report in The Guardian, mm -hmm. requiring a further tax rise of £1,430 per family. And that might mean massive spending cuts, or it, it might mean uh, huge rises in taxes. Now, the, the shadow chancellor, George Osborne, says that probably it will be filled by cuts, but it has allowed him to use the language which I think was successfully used by the Tories in 1992, calling a Labour tax bombshell is going to be unleashed on the British public. And it's interesting to see that um, there's a, a small note at the bottom of this article, which is, is quite a frightening one in many ways. The government has, of course, pledged to continue increasing spending on overseas aid. And I suspect that people of, of all political persuasions might be starting to ask, do we really need to be spending so much money on other countries when we're finding it so difficult to help ourselves? Yeah, but it's Gordon Brown's commitment, isn't it, to it improve is. the lives of people in Africa, for it example. Is. So he's not going to give up that one very easily. No. It's almost like yesterday's story was about the, the tax increases, certainly for the higher earners. This is now about public spending and the fact that you know, the, the IFS report is suggesting the labour spending we've seen in the last decade could be completely undone by what, it, by what is to come. An almost reverse of gears. And of course, Darling doesn't like to actually use the particular language, the C word for him. Cuts is something mm. that he doesn't like talking about. He might talk about re-emphasis re or constraints or And efficiency savings. Even today, he All said of those, they may not be cut. They're parallel words, but of course, really, whatever the next government is, whether it's Labour or Tory, there will have to be increases in taxes mm -hmm. and massive cuts as well, despite Darling's reluctance to use that language. The Financial Times read by many people who work in the banking industry or in the city generally, uh, talking about this exodus. Uh, and people are saying the very people who will get us out of a recession are those who will be clobbered by this, but it seems to be going down well in the country, to be fair. Oh, yes, they, they're suggesting here that the Chancellor's budget rises have tapped into rising popular hostility towards the rich. Well, are there, are there rich people who earn more than £100,000 a year? It depends how you define that, that particular genre. I mean, they, there's a, a, an accountant from Ernst & Young who's quoted as saying there's a definite sensation of what's next. The message is that high earners are not welcome here. And perhaps the only gainers will be BA with all those rich people buying one-way tickets to Geneva or Jersey or the Isle of Man. I mean, that is a concern, isn't it? But there seems to be people are equating rich people with bankers and they're none too happy with the bankers. <laughs> well, well, yes, but I think uh, uh, rich people were bankers a year ago, but I'm not quite sure how you define rich people now. Now they're unemployed, aren't Indeed they? Indeed so. Uh, the Daily Mail has gone on a different story about um, Britain's binge drinking habits. Well, a, a leading doctor has accused supermarkets of having the morality of the crack dealer for selling cut price alcohol. And again, we're talking about bombs here, uh, accusing them of having a binge drinking time bomb in the pipeline. Now, it, it's amazing to see alcohol getting such a bad press because, of course, tobacco has been condemned unequivocally over the years, and we know exactly where we stand with tobacco and how bad it is for us. But there has been a view, hasn't there, that some glasses of red wine a week might actually strengthen our heart muscles. So we really don't need we don't know where we stand with alcohol, and some of us could do with some guidance on that. Yeah, we know moderation is good for us, Apparently though, don't it we? Is. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the Daily Express, which talks about uh, migrants in France, presumably. Well, uh, uh, perfectly, uh, migrants who speak perfect English, apparently. And of course, it, it's very difficult to see what the solution for this is because mm. France just don't want them. There's an awful lot of them there. Do we have our open border policy? Is there room here? I'm not sure what p political party is going to do with this. Well, one. this comes after the French government uh, said it would clear Calais of what it called the blight of illegal immigrants wanting to cross the channel. They closed Songat, didn't they, more than six years ago? They've still been collecting around there, trying to get into the UK. The question is, if France closes um, this facility, where do they go? Where do it? they go? And I, I don't think there's going to be massive numbers of o open arms for them here. Mm. Let's move on to, uh, to what, is, what has been a horrific story. I have to remember that two people uh, are now being questioned, aren't they, by police. Uh, the Daily Mirror, the face of, of what they call Jigsaw Man, which is, in itself is horrific, isn't it? It is horrific. It, it shows that, uh, and I'm trying to scramble a positive point out of this story, is that the, the human body, once it's dead, is remarkably indestructible. And with modern science now, it is very difficult for 
uh, the body not to be within access of forensic science mm -hmm. in terms of identification, even in horrific circumstances like this. Mm, certainly his, uh, his family have, uh, say they're finding it extremely difficult to digest the news with the, uh, the naming of 49-year-old Geoffrey Howe. Well, thank you very much indeed, Graham. I know you're going to be back a little bit later on for our full press preview. Graham's going to be back at uh, 11.30.